Good morning, Historic First Baptist. Good morning, Salem. Good morning, New Hope. Good morning to everybody that is here and everybody that is tuned in online. We are so grateful, thankful, and we are so honored to be in the house of the Lord just one more time to praise and glorify and magnify his holy name. Did anybody come to give God the glory this morning? He is so good. He's so deserving of all the praise. And I'm going to ask everyone to stand to your feet as we worship the Lord this morning. We have a declaration that for the rest of our life, we are going to serve him. For the rest of our life, we are going to trust him. So if you don't mind, clap those hands and help us worship the Lord. Come on, he inhabits the praises of his people. And so we come to freely give it to him. He's so good. His truth is everlasting. His mercy he can do it to all generations. So come on, let's worship the Lord together. And for the rest of my life, for the rest of my life, I serve him. For the rest of my life, I'm going to trust him. For the rest of my life, I'm going to serve him. For the rest of my life, I'm going to trust him because he's been so good to me. And then he said me for the rest of my life. Come on, let's sing it again. For the rest of my life, I'm going to serve him. For the rest of my life, I'm going to trust him. For the rest of my life, I'm going to serve him. For the rest of my life, I'm going to trust him. Because he's been so good to me. And then he said me for the rest of my life. Just one more time. Let's raise it up again. For the rest of my life. I'm going to serve him. For the rest of my life. I'm going to trust him. For the rest of my life. I'm going to serve him. For the rest of my life. I'm going to trust him because he's been so good to me. And then he said, man, for the rest of my life. Yeah, I serve the Lord. I serve the Lord. Put your hands together. If you're going to serve the Lord, I'm going to serve the Lord. If I walk up right, if I talk up right, heaven's gonna be my home. Heaven's gonna be my home. I serve the Lord. I serve the Lord. I'm gonna serve the Lord. I'm gonna serve the Lord. I'm gonna serve the Lord. I'm living this life. Just to live again, I'm gonna serve the Lord. I'm gonna serve the Lord for the rest of my life. 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 I'm gonna walk up right. I'm gonna talk up right. I'm gonna live right. Treat my neighbor right. I'm gonna treat my enemies right. I'm gonna love my enemies. I'm gonna do right. I'm gonna think right. I'm gonna act right. For the rest of my life. For the rest of my life. My feet are planted. I'm gonna stay right here. Clap your hands if 
you made up in your mind that you're going to serve the Lord, oh, come on, let me see you clap those hands and give the Lord a praise. Family, for the rest of my life, the rest of my life. All right, I shall be reading our Old Testament coming from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 11 through 13. In the scripture, it answers, what are the blessings that results from obedience to the Lord? Let's read. The Lord would grant you abundance, prosperity. In the fruit of your womb, the young of your lifestyle, livestock, and the crops of your ground, in the land he swore to your ancestors to give you, the Lord will open the heavens, the house, storehouses of his, of his bounty to send rain on your land and season, and to bless all the work of your hands. You will lead to many of nations. You will lend to many nations, but will borrow from none. The Lord will make you the head not the tail. If you pay attention to the commandments of the Lord, your God, that I give you this day, and carefully follow them, you will always be the top and never at the bottom. New Testament coming from Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 through 27. In the scripture, how do we benefit from the teach, how do we benefit from following the teaching of Jesus? And it said, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and put them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears his words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down. The streams rose and the winds blew and beat against the house and it fell with a great crash. This is from Matthew chapter 7 verse 24 through 27. Bless the hearers and doers of his holy word. Can anybody declare this morning that you are blessed in the city, blessed in the field? I say, can anybody declare this morning that you are blessed? I'm here because I'm blessed. He's kept me all week because we are blessed. So help us worship the Lord this morning. The Lord is blessing me right now. He's giving me everything I need, everything I desire, everything I want. He's doing it. So help us clap those hands and help us worship the Lord together. Come on, let's sing. Sing the Lord, the Lord is blessing me, blessing me. right now. Right Oh, I said the Lord is blessing me right now. Oh, you know He will gonna be on my way. Said the Lord is blessing me. What is He doing? Right now, right now. Oh, 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 say the Lord is blessing me, blessing me. Right, now. right now, oh, oh, oh. Come on, let's sing verse two. Say, he woke me up this morning. I was close. Said he didn't let me sleep too late. He woke me. You know he woke me. Blessing me, said right now. Every time, let me hear you. The Lord is blessing me. 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 The 
People that can say the Lord. Yes, He is. Stay right there. Say it again. The Lord. Right now. Sing it again. The Lord. Yes, He is. Say He's blessing me. He's blessing me. He's blessing me. He's blessing me. I know that he is. He's blessing me. He's blessing me. He's blessing me. Set on my job. He's blessing me. Set in my house. He's blessing me. Set in my family. He blessing me, said amongst my friends, he blessing me, I know that he is, I believe that he is, I'm sure he is, he blessing me, you ought to clap your hands if he's blessing you, you ought to stomp your feet if he's blessing you, he blessing me, he blessing me, I know he blessing me, he blessing me, I'm glad about it, he blessing me, he woke me up, honey me on my way, say it again, he woke me up, started me on my way. Yes, he did, and he's turning me on my Said the Lord, he's blessing me, the Lord, he's blessing me, the Lord, he's blessing me, said right now, oh, now if you glad he's blessing you, I wish I had some more people that could put those hands together and give him a praise. Scripture says, I was glad when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord. Yes. Dear Heavenly Father, we come this morning thanking you for this opportunity to worship you in spirit and in truth. Yes. We just thank you, dear Heavenly Father, that we are closed with our right minds uh -huh. 
that we have a desire to come out to worship you this morning in spirit and in truth. We thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for all the blessings which you have bestowed upon each of us. Thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for health and strength. We just assemble this morning just to say thank you. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray that you would bless our efforts today. Bless Reverend Watson, who is out. Continue to protect him and give him strength. We ask the Heavenly Father that you would bless Pastor Marshall this morning as he break to us the bread of life. Then, dear Heavenly Father, there are those who are been sick and are sick. We pray for all of our members, those who have recently had to experience death in the families. But we see on our list, dear Heavenly Father, there are many, the Goodman family, Miss Blue, Reverend Blue, her family, Charles Jackson and his family, Reverend Patrick and his family. And then there we had Mer a nun member, Monique Merweather, lost her mother. So do you see, Heavenly Father, even though death is among us, we just pray for your guidance, put your arms around us, and give us strength and comfort us. We ask that you would bless our service this morning. We pray to Heavenly Father as we've been instructed that our lives will be better and that we better understand your will and way for our life. Bless our country this Heavenly Father, for we know there's turmoil everywhere. But just help us to realize that you are still in control and that nothing happens without your permission. We ask that you just be with us throughout this service today. Just continue to lead us and guide us in the direction we should go. In Christ's name we pray and ask it all. Amen. Good morning, Historic First Baptist, Salem and New Hope. God bless you this morning. God bless you. Well, we'll come to the second part of our worship. It is giving time. Yes, it is. It is giving time. Let me draw your attention to the book of Malachi, chapter 3. I want to read only one verse. Again, that is the book of Malachi, chapter 3 and verse 10. Listen to these words. It says, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I would not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessings that there will not be room enough to store it. Amen. I like this. This is one of my favorite scriptures because I've been one of them who has put God to the test. And I've seen God do what he said that he would do. He's, I done seen him rebuke the devourer for my sake. I've seen them give me more than I even had enough room to store in my house, in my garage, in my outhouse out back. I've seen God through my giving do extremely magnificent things. But don't let me leave that out. I've seen him when I need him to, 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 to take care of a situation with my children. Regardless of what it was, I've seen God again make things better. And so we actually here this morning at Historic First Baptist to give, to give graciously, to give back ultimately what God has so graciously given you. And because of that, we are who we are today through what God has blessed us with through our jobs, through our businesses. It's all because of God. It ain't us. It ain't been because we've been so smart, or yet we have done everything right. If truth be told, it's all been because of the Lord. Amen? All right, all right. Listen, for those who are online, uh, if you made, there's a 
couple ways that you can give this morning also. There's Givelify, there's Text to Give, it's the app Church by Ministry One. You can also download, but don't stop there. You can also give by mailing your gift in at 433 Martin Luther King Drive here in the great city of Jackson, Tennessee, area code 38301. But there's one more way you can give also. You can also, by logging on to the World Wide Web, you can also give at historic, excuse me, historic first baptistchurch.org slash give okay listen let me do something with you this morning let me pray with you over your offering can I do that with you this morning all right let us pray father God we thank you again God for what you have done in our lives God thank you God for every gift is true God it comes from above God you have blessed us, God, yet above measures, God. And this morning, God, by obedience, God, we bring back yet the offering and the tithe, God, unto you, God, that this church, God, may have enough food, God, to bless our community, but yet, God, also bless every individual here in this church, God. It is because of you, God, that things are so perfect, God. Not perfect as perfect, God, but because you are perfect, God, you make all things better, God. So, God, you said, God, that if we'll give, God, we believe that you are a man of your word, God, and that your word shall not come back void to us, God. You said give and you'll rebuke the devourer for our sake, God. And so, God, we trust you this morning, God, that you will do what you said that you would do, God. We thank you now, God, for being a God who is concerned yet about our needs. Now unto him who has been able to keep all of us from falling and yet who has presented us before the Father with exceeding joy, it is in the matchless name of Jesus Christ these things we ask you, Lord, and now let the church say amen. Can anybody testify this morning that the Lord is keeping you? I'm so glad that the Lord is keeping me through everything that is going on in the world all the calamity, all the disasters, the Lord has kept us. So one more time, help us worship the Lord as we declare that he is keeping us. We know it's not ourselves. We're not doing it ourselves. It's only him. So help us worship the Lord. I want you guys to join in with us. You can clap your hands. You can stomp your feet. However you want to worship, let's do it together as we make our declaration. God is keeping us, and we're glad about it. Come on, help us worship the Lord. Come on. Yeah. I want you to know that God is keeping me. Yeah. I want you to know that God is keeping he me. Blessed me. He blessed me. And he kept me. And he kept from me. From a sing it together this morning. Let's worship the Lord. I want you to know that God is keeping me. Yes. I want you to know that God is keeping he me. He blessed me. He blessed me. And he kept me. And he kept me. From a harm. Come on, let's sing it together. Yeah. God is keeping me. God is keeping me. Oh, yes. God is keeping me. Wave your hand if you can say it. God is, wave your hands at us. God is keeping me. God is keeping me. Said, oh, yes. God is keeping me. 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 And I want to tell them thank you. 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 He blessed me. And he 
help me. Said the Lord bless me. And he kept me. He blessed me. And he kept me. Put those hands together one more time and let's give him a praise. Well, praise the Lord this morning. It is good to be with you here in the house of the Lord again. I'm grateful to have the opportunity to share with you from the word of the Lord. Proverbs 4 and 7 says this. It's just one verse. The beginning of wisdom is this. Though it cost you all you have, get understanding. The beginning of wisdom is this, get wisdom. Though it costs you all you have, get understanding. Let us pray together. Father God, this morning, we are a people desperate for wisdom. There seems to be folly and foolishness all around us. There is arguing and bickering, debate. And Father, in this moment, we need wisdom. So Lord, you told your servant Solomon that if he asked for wisdom, you would give him everything else that he needs. So Lord, we ask like Solomon this morning, all we want, if we could ask for anything in the world, all we want is wisdom. For Lord, we trust and believe you that if we have the gift of wisdom, we will have the ability and the knowledge and the understanding to seek all that which is good. And we will have, above all other things, the wisdom to seek you first. So bless us this morning. Bless the word. Bless your people. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Again, good morning, brothers and sisters. I pray that you are well this morning. And again, even as we pray, that despite the troubles of the world, that you've entered into this space this morning with hope. Hope for today. Hope for tomorrow. Hope for our church. Hope for the community and hope for our world. Hope is a virtue that can feel like a hard commodity to come by nowadays. But that seems to be true of virtue itself. I, I, I've got to get this off of my chest this morning because I, I've noticed something strange these past several months. I've been traveling a lot for work, and for some reason, it's as if people have forgotten that the left lane is for slow drivers. Oh, I, I, I've got to tell the truth this morning, because people have come out of the pandemic, out of isolation, thinking that they can just drive in any lane that they want to. No, I, I'm here to tell y'all this morning, some of y'all need to be in the right lane. You're holding up traffic. Some of us have got places that we're trying to get to. The right lane is for everyone who drives 
five miles under the speed limit. The left lane is for everyone who drives at the speed limit. I can't have y'all out here thinking that I'm breaking laws. I'm going the limit most of the time. Actually, that's not really the most shocking or important thing that I've noticed about traffic patterns lately. There are, or there is, a far more significant occurrence that I've picked up on that's left me frustrated. I'm not sure if any of you have noticed this, but most people no longer pull over to the side of the road for funeral recessions or for ambulances, especially if they're going in the opposite direction. They just keep on putting down the road. No respect for the families in mourning, nor for the families or first responders in crisis. I've seen too many times, and it just leaves me dumbfounded. Have we become so selfish that we can't take a few seconds to surrender the road to show respect to somebody in loss? What the drivers lack is understanding. That is empathy, compassion, and wisdom. And that will be the focus of our time together this morning. Wisdom and understanding. Back last year during one of our Bible study series, we discussed the spiritual gifts. Did you know? that wisdom and understanding are a spiritual gift, that they're spiritual gifts? The Apostle Paul speaks of these in his letter to the church in Corinth. It's found at 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 through 8, where he writes these words. Now, there are a variety of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge or understanding according to the same Spirit. Again, for context, the Apostle Paul is writing to those Christians living on the Greek peninsula in the city of Corinth. His letter is meant to address several questions that they have about this new religion of which they have become converts. Both corporate questions and personal questions. And one of the things that they want to know more about is how do the spiritual gifts work? During his time in Corinth, they witnessed Paul do miraculous things. And they had heard further stories from other congregations, so they are eager to understand more about these gifts. So Paul begins this section at verse 1 of chapter 12 saying, Now concerning the spiritual gifts. You see, Paul wants to first, and he feels the need to remind them of something as he begins this conversation namely their former cultural practices. As a Greek province, the citizens of Corinth were deeply entrenched in the worship of pagan gods, namely Aphrodite. In fact, Corinth had its own version of the famous Acropolis of Athens. It was called Acrocorinthus. In fact, on this site was a huge temple dedicated to the goddess of love, inside of which stood a huge statue of the deity. Yet Paul reminds them that this statue was just that, a mute idol. It could not speak. Yet they had been enticed and led astray by the activities in that temple. They had been, as one of our brothers used to say, hoodwinked, bamboozled. 
deceived by an in intricate show put on by men behind a curtain. So Paul warns them, you can't listen to just anybody when it comes to spiritual matters. While discernment is a gift itself, there is a simple test that anyone should start with. He says, no one speaking by the Spirit of God will ever curse Jesus. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Practically speaking, you don't need to be taking advice from anyone who denies the Savior. If they deny Jesus, they themselves should be denied from the ability to speak into your life. So Jesus can't be just a good teacher. Jesus can't just be a wise philosopher. If he's not their Lord, they shouldn't be your leader. And here's why. Paul says, no one can even genuinely confess that Jesus is Lord without the help of the Holy Spirit. So you certainly cannot possess gifts without him because he's the one who gives them. So anyone who works so-called miracles but denies Jesus is either deceptive or they're tapping into some other source of power. Do you not remember the story of the slave girl with the spirit of divination that Paul encountered in Philippi? It's recorded in Acts chapter 16. The Bible never denies, listen, the Bible never denies that the girl actually had spiritual power. It just makes it plain that the source of the power was not God. There are other sources of power at work in the world and those other sources of power do not have our good in mind. So Paul wants us to be clear as he begins talking about the gifts that these come from only one source and that is the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God himself. So picking up again at verse 4, now, there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifest manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom. And another, the utterance of knowledge or understanding according to the same Spirit. At this past week's noon Bible study, we discussed this same idea. Again, it says, to each is given the manifest manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. Let me say it again, the common good. Your gift, that means, ain't for you. It's for everybody else. Our spiritual gifts are for the community's benefit, not our own. This should be easy to discern because notice the language used again in verses 4 through 6. There are varieties of gifts, varieties of services, varieties of activities. Yet Paul is talking about one and the same thing. That is, he is equating or labeling gifts as services and activities to others. Every gift that you or I possess is to become a service or an activity. Again, it is to be used for the benefits of others. This is true of both wisdom and understanding. The Bible talks about wisdom quite often. In fact, the Old Testament contains a series of writings or books referred to as wisdom literature. The books that comprise this collection are Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and Song of Solomon. These books generally emphasize the importance of understanding and attaining wisdom for all areas of life, including our relationship with God and our relationships with others. They talk about marriage, family, community, and faith. 
here are just a few excerpts that specifically deal with the theme of wisdom. Proverbs 16, 16. How much better to get wisdom than gold. To get understanding is to be chosen rather than silver. Job 12, 12. Is not wisdom found among the aged? Does not long life bring understanding. Ecclesiastes 2, 26. For to the one who pleases him, God has given wisdom and knowledge and joy. But to the sinner, he has given the business of gathering and collecting only to give to one whom pleases God. This is also vanity and striving after the wind. Proverbs 29, 11. A fool gives full vent to anger but the wise quietly holds it back. Proverbs 19 and 8. To get wisdom is to love oneself. To keep understanding is to prosper. Again, all of these sayings are given that we might both aspire to and attain wisdom that we might, from that wisdom, lead upright lives that bring peace not only to our home, but to the homes of our families and friends. But if we are to ask what wisdom actually is, the Bible gives us a hint by connecting it with an often repeated observation. Proverbs 16.31 says, Gray hair is the crown of glory. And it is gained in a righteous life. Proverbs 20, 28 and 29 say, Steadfast love and faithfulness preserve the king. And by steadfast love, his throne is upheld. The glory of a young man is their strength. But the splendor of an old man is their gray hair. How often have we heard that with gray hair comes wisdom? If you haven't heard that yet, it's because your gray hair hadn't started coming in yet. Just wait. Just wait. Because when you begin to hit middle age and the silver streaks starting appearing, as you yearn for what used to be, particularly the vitality and appearance of your youth, someone will inevitably encourage you not to worry too much about the gray hair because, baby, that's just wisdom coming in. And while we know, we all know, some folks who have heads full of gray hair but still lack common sense, there is a certain truism about gray hair and wisdom. This is because, generally speaking, wisdom is ultimately about experience. The dictionary defines wisdom as the quality of having experience, knowledge, and good judgment, the quality of being wise. So wisdom is first and foremost about having, again, experience. Now you may be asking, well, how exactly is that a gift? Well, because the experiences that you've had in your life are themselves gifts from God. You didn't choose where you were born. You didn't choose who you were born to. And there have been several other things that have taken place along your journey that were also out of your control. Thus, these experiences you've had, listen to me, even the bad ones were gifts. Because even the ill happenings have produced for you wisdom. Joseph told his brothers, what you meant for evil, God used for good. You see, that brother learned from his experiences, even the traumatic ones. And when we learn from ours, we too gain wisdom. Our trials shape and mold us. They produce in us character. 
And listen to these words from Romans 5, 3 through 5. It says, we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that our sufferings produce endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame. Because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Yes, with experience comes character. And with character comes wisdom. And that wisdom then produces in you the opportunity to provide guidance to those going through the same th thing you went through. Notice that in our text in 1 Corinthians, it actually says that the gift is the utterance of wisdom. Not just wisdom itself. To put it another way, the gift is the ability to give wise advice it's even clearer now right that the gift is not for you but for others you've been given this wisdom in order to share it with those coming after you because your experience has taught you both listen the shoots and the ladders the shoots to avoid that is and the ladders to climb but let me also talk for just a second about what it looks like when you ignore the lessons of your experience. If the education of experience produces wisdom, then naturally the ignoring of that instruction produces foolishness, which is defined as a lack of good sense or judgment. When it comes to foolishness, there is nothing worse than having endured the suffering of trials and yet exit them having learned nothing through the process. Such a person becomes destined to repeat their mistakes. This is referred to often in Proverbs as folly. Proverbs 15, 21, folly is a joy to one who has no sense, but a person of understanding walks straight ahead. Proverbs 14, 16, one who is wise is cautious and turns away from evil, but a fool is reckless and careless. And Proverbs 26, 11 says, like a dog that returns to his own vomit is a fool who repeats his folly. So wisdom is not only our having had the experiences, but our having learned from them. Our having paid attention to the lesson so as to prove we understood the assignment. Lest we repeat the same misstep, we all know the definition of insanity, right? Doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. But listen, listen, even the devil is smart enough to know better than that. This is precisely why the enemy is so good at tempting mankind, because he knows how men and women think, and he knows that even across thousands of years, we often still fall for the same old stuff. So he's confident in his deceptions. But a wise person resists the schemes of the devil, and when we resist, what does the scripture say? He flees. Because he even knows that it would be a waste of time to keep tempting someone with the same temptation that no longer works. So he leaves until he finds something better to tempt us with. So if he knows that, why should we keep repeating the same mistakes? Learn from your experiences and try something different. But to take it a step further, while you'll certainly demonstrate wisdom by learning from your own experiences, you'll only level up when you demonstrate the ability to learn from other people's. Can I tell you this morning that there are certain trials you just shouldn't have to go through yourself? When I was a child, I was a bit hard-headed. My cousin Courtney can affirm this. 
And I always had to try everything. My father told me one day, you need to start learning by watching other people. Because it would show sure enough save your behind from a lot of whippings. And I got a lot of them. He then said, if the only way you can learn something is by going through the pain yourself, you're in for a long, hard life. It took a mighty good number of whoopings, but I finally got the point. Wisdom is the ability to learn not only from your own experiences, but also others. I began to understand that I could gain a lot just by observing the habits of other people. And if I truly paid attention and applied what I learned, then life would be a whole lot more rewarding. You see, Moses taught us to number our days. He understood that a person only has a certain amount of time allotted on this earth. Now, none of us can be certain how much time that is. Most folks get about 70 years. But here's the question. Have you numbered your days? That is, do you have a plan for your allotted time? Whether you assume that to be longer or shorter, ultimately, when your life is over, what will be your story? What will you have to show for it? Because here's the problem. Most of us would rather keep acting young than age gracefully. Just look at all the magazines in the grocery store and all the social media posts. We live in a culture that prefers the appearance of youthfulness over the achievement of wisdom. And I'm here, I'm here to remind you this morning, growing old is a gift. Growing old is a gift. Because with age, you are granted the abundance of life's experiences. And it's the overflow, the outpouring of those experiences that become wisdom that you can then share with the next generation. Billy Graham is quoted as saying, when granted many years of life, growing old is natural. But growing old with grace is a choice. Finally, wisdom should lead to understanding. And by that, as I said earlier, I mean empathy and compassion. As we go through situations in life, our experiences, particularly our difficult ones, should generate within us a certain level of understanding. We should be quick to remember our dark days, lest we become judgmental of those who now find themselves in similar scenarios. God warned Israel of this in Deuteronomy chapter 24, verses 17. He says to them, you shall not pervert the justice due to the foreigner or to the fatherless or take a widow's garment in pledge, but you shall remember that you were a slave in Egypt 
and the Lord God redeemed you from there. Therefore, I command you to do this. A lack of understanding or empathy is one of the greatest displays of folly because you and I will give an answer for every idle word. On Friday, the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade. This decision was the worst kept secret in U.S. politics over the last two months. And I'm going to admit this morning that I have very mixed emotions about the whole thing. You see, I'm not sure that any one of you know exactly how I got my name, Matthew. A few years before I was born, my mother, who's no longer with us, had an abortion. I won't go into all of the details, but later, she and my father had trouble having a baby. She would not become pregnant. And she believed, earnestly she believed, that that was God's punishment for her actions. And she prayed, and she prayed, and she prayed over a couple of years. And she asked in that prayer that she would be able to give my father just one son. She finally became pregnant with me. And she decided to name me Matthew because it means gift from God. So, a part of me celebrates that babies in the womb will now be better protected. My mother worked at Birth Choice several years ago, a ministry I support. However, there is another side of me that laments the general lack of wisdom and empathy in how this whole thing played out. You see, I've witnessed women who themselves had abortions, have their emotions manipulated as they are radicalized into a movement. And they've been persuaded to yell and scream outside of clinics at other women considering the procedure. Some of these same women have maybe forgotten how lonely and heartbreaking that choice was for them to make. They've forgotten how they came to that decision because the community and sometimes their own families had failed them. Failing to provide support emotionally, spiritually, financially. I've witnessed those who claim our faith weaponize our faith and pursue, as I've told you before, power and politics over people. The same people who claim that God delivered them from their brokenness beat down people who are broken. The Catholic Church and the Southern Baptist Convention, who've been the two most outspoken on this topic, even as they have been engulfed in abuse scandals. Why have they not had the wisdom to remove the log from their own eyes before addressing the specks in the world's eye? Do you know that as recently as 10 years ago, according to the polling data, most people in the country agreed that abortion was undesirable? That's not the issue. And while it's true that abortion rights have been almost exclusively a Democrat issue, the reality is that most of us in the black community never promoted the practice. We've always encouraged the raising of our own. And it was our leaders who were the first to speak out against the placement of those clinics in our communities. Yet, 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 Instead of working to fix the true reasons most women get abortions, poverty, the lack of proper medical access, education, and sexual violence, 
Some who claim our faith elected a demagogue, himself accused by multiple women of assault, who was hell-bent on not only maintaining our divisions, but widening them. I say this morning, we need wisdom and understanding. So again, my heart, my spirit is split within me. It's my sincere desire that no woman should ever have a reason to have to consider aborting her child. But unless these same people who claim to be pro-life are now willing to be just as ardent an advocate for the born as they have been for the unborn, I'm afraid that their witness will ring hollow. So I'm waiting. I'm waiting for the protests outside of prisons. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for the protests outside of city halls and county commissions when schools are underfunded. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for protests outside of Congress demanding better health care and better housing. I'm waiting for pro-life policies womb to the tomb. I'm waiting for all this money that's been poured into the pro-life policy agenda to now be poured into communities that need it the most. But I won't wait too long. Because as Pastor Watson preached a few Sundays ago, God commands us, Psalm 82, 3 and 4, give justice to the weak and the fatherless. Maintain the right of the afflicted and the destitute. Rescue the weak and the needy. Deliver them from the hand of the wicked. So yes, babies in the womb need protection, but so does that mother, both before and after the birth. So may we have the wisdom and understanding to now set policies and laws in place that ensure they both have the protection they need. These are not mutually exclusive. Evangelical churches all around the country are celebrating today. But if they don't get the more important part right, God's name will be cursed because of their hypocrisy. May the Lord be true, even though every man is a liar. God, teach us to walk in wisdom and understanding. May God add a blessing to the hearers and doers of his word this morning. Brothers and sisters, it is a reality that we are a broken people that reaches out to the broken. I said to a couple of coworkers a week or two ago, we were having some conversations about the differences between the black church and the white church. I've been in both. And I said, one thing that always stuck, stood out to me is the types of songs we often sing. Very often in the black church tradition, we sing songs of lament. We cry out to the Lord to rescue us from our hardships, to deliver us from our oppressors. And so often in white congregations, they sing songs of victory. They sing songs about how they are marching into battle on behalf of the Lord to take what belongs to them, to the kingdom. Here's the reality. Both are right. We are God's soldiers. But if we are not careful to be reminded, to remind ourselves often that God delivered us from our bondage, 
that he set us free from our chains, then we will become in our victory march oppressors. We march not with swords and shields. We march with plowshares and flags of peace. And again, as I said a moment ago, if we don't get that balance right, we bring disrepute to the entire ministry. Let us get that right. So brother or sister, as you are out there this morning, we invite you into the family. We invite you into our army. But again, we don't invite you to take up a sword. We invite you to extend a hand of peace. We have so much work to do in the world. And we must be peacemakers in the process. I've asked you before, when the world thinks of us, when they think of the church, do they think of love? Or do they think of judgment? We need to have the wisdom and understanding to be people who love others in the same way we want to be loved. So brother, sister, again, if you're out there, we invite you in to this opportunity to become a member at a place that will love you. Love you just as you are because Jesus loved us just as we were. But I'll tell you, he didn't leave us as we were. He forms within us greater love and greater love and greater love every single day. And we want to invite you into that, to be on that journey with us. Would you come? Would you come? We offer Christ to you, oh my brother. We offer Christ to you, oh my sister. He will give you brand new life. He'll give you life abundantly. So come, come on to Christ. We praise God for all of you who made a decision today. It was on the screen for you, but there are ways for you to now get involved and get connected with our church. And so you can reach out directly to us. Uh, and again, they'll pull that up on the screen for you. Uh, you can dial the phone number here to the church. You can also email us directly. And we would love to pray for you and now help you get connected here with this ministry. And so you see it there on your screen, 731-422-2751. You can contact us. But also, if you're in need of prayer, uh, you can... Also email us at prayer at historicfirstbaptistchurch.org. There are other ways for you to get involved. We want you to come and be a part of what God is doing here in our midst. Well, brothers and sisters, again, there's so much work to do. And so as we prepare to go, I hope that today's message has been encouraging to you. And I, I don't do that for a clap. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I really do mean it and I want to remind you I've said it so many times before these issues can be difficult they can be difficult they don't often fit in one political party or the other we're Christians we're Christians first and foremost so we don't often ever fit in anybody's corner but too often, some have made it seem like we should. So I tell people, and I've told you before, there's some things that I'm Democrat on. 
there's very few things that I'm Republican on, but every now and then. And that's the reality, is that we are on a very thin and narrow road. Very few find it. And wisdom is the ability to navigate that road successfully. So brothers and sisters, why don't you stand with me and let me bless you as you prepare to go. Look this way. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of Jesus, amen.